Thank you so much for joining us today. It's um, a historic moment for Longwood where we will welcome our 26th president. Um, he was selected this Saturday by an uproariously unanimous vote of the Board of Visitors, which, is, which was a great day for us. It's uh, going to be a, a great day for Longwood. Um, as we look toward Virginia, for, I'm sorry, Virginia's future, I got you promoted to governor. That didn't take long. <laughs> yeah. No pressure. Uh, as we look toward Longwood's future, it's also important to remember and honor the uh, efforts of those who have gotten us where we are today. So I'd, I'd like everybody to think for a moment about all the presidents we've had. I, we were hoping to have the Dorals here. I don't think they made it, but if they are here, I'm going to look around. Maybe they'll sneak in at the end. Um, and I just have a few other people uh, that I want to thank and a couple people that you like to, you, you're going to hear from, but we've told them to be brief because we know that we're not the uh, star attraction today. Um, I want to say that I'm grateful, very much grateful, to have folks here from the town of Farmville, and if I could ask them to stand. Thank you. Hi, Gary. And also from the county of Prince Edward. So if you guys could stand, do. Thank you very much. I know it was very last minute notice, and I know you all are busy, so I really do appreciate you taking time to come by. We're excited to have you. I'm also going to introduce really briefly and ask them to stand individually the members of the Board of Visitors who are here with us today. These, these folks work very hard, and um, they're not all from around here, but they all get here as often as they can. They care very deeply for the, for the school, for the university, and I'm really happy to get to work with them. We have a lot of fun. Um, so, Either stand or wave to us if you don't mind. Ed Gordon. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Shelby Walker. Shelby Walker. Ron White, who just got a haircut. <laughs> Steve Mobley. And Lacey Ward. And, and last, but definitely not least, I also um, want to introduce for a moment um, the remaining member of the Board of Visitors that is here with us today um, and just say a word or two about her real quickly. I asked uh, Jane Maddox to chair this uh, search committee about nine months ago, and you know, we, just, we didn't know what we were getting into. My husband said after he'd built my daughter's... Uh, play set in the backyard. I'd be really good at that the second time. It would be easy. But you don't get to do it like that. So it was uh, a little bit of baptism by fire, but um, this is somebody that I did not know before I came to the Board of Visitors. We came um, together, and she has been outstanding. And to watch her care so deeply about a place that's not her alma mater, um, I've just been really amazed. And she's been tireless and happy and excited and a great role model for all of us throughout this. So I'd like to thank her for her leadership on the Presidential Search Advisory Committee and ask her to come up for just a moment and let you know who those folks are. Well, thank you, Marianne, for all your leadership. It would have never happened without you. So I'd like to um, introduce the Board of Visitors who were on the committee first. Rector Mary Ann Radcliffe, Dr. Ed Gordon, Ms. Judy Lynch, who is not here, Steve Mobley, and Ron White. Working with them were faculty members Dr. Derek Taylor, who served as my vice chair, could have never done it without him, Dr. Cheryl Atkins, Dr. Audrey Church, and Senate faculty chair Dr. Larissa Ferguson. Staff members were Angie Covert and Michelle Meadows, Brian Reed, who was just fabulous, our student. Everybody just loved Brian. Where are you, Brian? Where are you? Stand up. And someone else very special to us was Colleen Margoloff, who is our alumni president. Um, she gave, she's from New York and unfortunately is not able to be with us. So please join me in, in thanking all these people Collectively now, but individually later, if you see them, please, the number of hours they sent it, put into this was amazing. So the past nine months of the search for our new president of Longwood University has absolutely been amazing. And I want you to know the people most closely involved, the search committee, 
are, are just individuals that came together not knowing each other ever before and that again collectively became a quick family melded together with one purpose in mind. I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize the wise counsel of our board consultant, Dr. Steve Porch, and our consultant, uh, search consultant, Dr. Constantine Kouris, who of course is not with us today. But it's an impossible for me to imagine that we could have accomplished this remarkable search without the committee that we assembled. Some of the most dedicated persons who love this university. We had one mission, and that was to find the best candidate who would lead Longwood and its citizen leaders in this time of great and challenging change. When we began our search, the pool quickly rose to 65. Then our hard work began. We talked in length and breadth with many questions asked. Our discussions were strong and lively, as we can all attest to, <laughs> with a great deal of energy. Each of us had to think and rethink our choices. Everyone on this committee was a dedicated professional who knew we had a difficult task with much to gain. In my opinion, the search committee provided two of the most highly qualified individuals in higher education to be the final <clears throat> candidates for this job. So our thanks also goes to the Board of Visitors and their wisdom in selecting our president-elect, Taylor Reevely. And as a side, I have to tell you, one of the things that I had to continually say to my committee was, it's Reevely, not Revly. <laughs> and I knew that because his grandfather was at Hamden, Sydney when my husband was there in college. So I knew his name quite well, so I kept having to say that. So you all remember that. It's Reevely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I thought I could avoid doing this, but I'm not going to avoid doing it. I tell you, if, I, if you had told me when I was um, a Longwood woman that I would ask a Mary Baldwin graduate to chair our uh, search committee, <laughs> no one would have believed that, so, including me. The next person I want to give a couple minutes to um, is our, our uh, vice chair of our committee, Derek Taylor, who did a fantastic job representing um, the faculty, but also we had, we had a talk sort of at the beginning that said, you, you know, you're here and we, you, got, you got chosen because we had to sort of represent everyone, but we need you to put that aside and really think about the campus as a whole. And I, I think everybody did that, but I think maybe Derek did it better than anybody. And um, I congratulate you for that because it's not easy to take off a hat that you wear so well. And I will tell you, he is our board, um, he's the faculty representative to the Board of Visitors, and as the bills wound their way through the General Assembly this year, uh, to force boards of editors to have non-voting uh, non faculty members on, I thought if they could all meet Derek Taylor, it would be a really easy thing to do. So why don't you say a few words. Thanks, Derek. Good afternoon. Um, I was sitting with my son in the family van, waiting for my youngest to finish uh, up with her soccer game when I received the news that Longwood had hired its next president. The following comment encapsulates rather nicely, I think, how I felt at that moment and really how I've felt ever since. My daughter, upon entering the van, looked at me closely and asked, why are you smiling like that? I am so, so honored and happy to have the opportunity to introduce you to the source of that satisfaction today. If you've never met a college football player who majored in classics, one with advanced degrees in theology and law, one who helped to oversee mergers and acquisitions in the billions of dollars for Hunton and Williams, who worked with the General Assembly to secure resources for the establishment of the new College Institute in Martinsville, who chaired the Board of Trustees for Virginia Intermont College and helped them to get on the right side of the Sachs ledger, who coordinated the efforts of former U.S. Secretaries of State James Baker and Warren Christopher in authoring a report for the National War Powers Commission, 
who has for years managed the Miller Center at UVA, a premier political and public policy institute and teaching facility whose endowment has now grown to $65 million and who taught Latin in high school and has twin eight-month-olds. <laughs> if you've never met that person, I've got great news for you. You're about to. His name is Mr. Taylor Reevely IV. He's the next president of Longwood University, and that is something worth smiling about. Thank you. Hard to follow a, teach, a professor, <laughs> like no matter what you do. Just two more, and then me, then you get to see him. Um, <laughs> the next person uh, we'd like to ask to have just a couple comments is Brian Reed, who Jane referenced earlier. Um, you know, the great thing about serving on a, a presidential search advisory committee and doing a good job is then everyone wants to hire you. And he is a senior, so uh, he's impressed pressed us all tremendously, and I will tell you honestly, and I've said this before, very, very often throughout this process, Brian's points were the most relevant, the most succinct, the most articulate, and the most meaningful ones we had, and I really, truly mean that. So, Brian, why don't you get, get up here and say a few words. On Saturday afternoon, when Mr. Reevely accepted the role of president of Longwood University, I was asked to write a quote for the press release. I poured all of my emotions and excitement into just a few sentences, a mere snapshot of what was going on in my mind at the time. But the phrase I kept coming back to, the phrase that I truly believe captures our next president, is that he gets it. If you ask me what it is, I can't really give you just one answer. It is student debt. It is a shrinking budget from the Commonwealth. It is the many responsibilities of a university president. And it is the century-old traditions that we have here at Longwood. He gets it. Mr. Reevely truly cares about students and will continue to be our advocate long beyond the days when we have our degrees in hand. And Longwood University may not be every student's first choice, but rest assured that Long University was your next president's first choice. Thank you. Yeah, and now you see what I mean. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank uh, Interim President Marge Connolly. In just, a few, in just a few short months, President Connolly has moved Longwood forward in so many ways. She has inspired faculty and staff to think about different ways of doing business that have brought significant benefits to students as well as the university's bottom line. Her contributions will be remembered, and she leaves Longwood in fantastic shape for our new president and for that, we will always be tremendously grateful. We're very lucky to have had her talents. Very, very few people get to have you know, this kind of experience where we would have somebody with the kind of experience that Marge has and that would come and loan us her talents. So I, please help me give a warm welcome to Marge Donnelly. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that, and um, you're not rid of me yet. So, um, but I do want to uh, personally welcome our president-elect Rory. It's a pleasure, um, and I do want to also, since I have the chance here today, I want to thank the board of visitors for this just fabulous opportunity. I mean, in you know, in a million years, I couldn't have dreamed of having such a a wonderful experience. And uh, I jokingly say this is going to be the only job I've ever had where I'm actually going to leave it feeling younger than when I started it. And let me tell you, that does not happen in business and financial services on a, on a regular basis. So um, 
But, you know, I, I wanted to just share a few words. Um, Taylor and I got to spend a little bit of time this morning, and, you know, we're not going to pretend that uh, uh, we know each other well yet. We haven't spent a lot of time together. But even in that short bit, uh, there's a few things that I can tell you already. Uh, the first is that I like him. I do. And I found him to be a very gracious and a very sincere person, and I think you will as well. And I absolutely believe that he shares our view that Longwood is a special place and is completely committed to working with all of you to continue to move Longwood forward. So I encourage you to embrace and help him like you did me. And I know that he's going to find just huge value from that warm embrace. And from now until June, President Revelle and I, you've messed me up, Jane, I got to tell you. <laughs> I was doing fine until this other thought entered my mind, and now I'm struggling. Anyways, we will be working together to ensure that we have just as smooth a transition as possible. Until then, he and I both know that we've got a lot left to accomplish in this year, and that we are both in full agreement that we don't want to lose the fabulous momentum that we've been able to gain. So I thank you all, and I look forward to the next few months and working together to make this a great transition. Thanks. Thank you. All right, just me. I'm the only thing standing between us now. So I'm not going to talk long because he's a has far more articulate things to say than I do. But I do want to just tell you that at each stage of this process, and it's a long process, we became more delighted to get to know Taylor Reevely, to listen to his thoughts about Longwood, his insights on higher education, and his commitment to developing citizen leaders. Checking his references was a surreal experience for a Longwood political science alumna. It was an honor to talk with the distinguished statesmen and politicians that served as his references, but they merely confirmed what we had already come to know. It was the rest of the day, and it was just a week ago, which seems so weird now, but it was, it was the rest of the day at the Miller Center that was most affirming. It was the individuals who worked for and with him who told us what we needed to know. They described a powerful intellectual who is humble and kind and strategic, a big thinker who is practical in application, and a friend whom they will miss. He understands Longwood at her core, and I'm not sure how you've done that so quickly, but it, it's very important. He knows where we need to go, and he has wonderful ideas about how to get us there. In addition that day, it was a pleasure to meet Marla Reefley, Longwood's future first lady. She's accomplished in her own right and will be an outstanding role model and a wonderful asset for the Longwood community. Please join me in welcoming Longwood's 26th president, Taylor Reefley. All right, so ever since Saturday, I've had uh, one particular very important question on my mind, and that is whether I'm a member of the red team or the green team. <laughs> <laughs> this place, um, Farmville, Prince Edward, have always been a part of my life. And I am so tremendously humbled and honored to be standing here now in, in this capacity. Saturday was a very special day in the life of a 175-year-old institution, one of the 100 oldest colleges and universities in the country. In the age-old academic rhythms, a board of citizen leaders enthused by the momentum that President Connolly 
has so wonderfully made, made a decision about the next step for the university. It was a nine-month search. As, as you've seen, uh, it, it entailed an enormous amount of labor from an enormous number of people. Um, it was a delight for me to get to meet so many of you already uh, through the course of the, the process and uh, more today and uh, all of you uh, very soon. It was also a very special day uh, just uh, for a very personal reason. It was, <laughs> she's sitting there, it was my mom's birthday on Saturday. <clears throat> family is, is very important for us and it, it, uh, it made for a very nice family birthday party. Saturday night. <laughs> My wife Marlo is sitting right here. Our twins, eight months old, are behaving remarkably well. <laughs> uh, sitting, sitting right here. May and Quint. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, today is mostly about introductions and thanks. There'll be there'll be junctures in the future for long speechifying and uh, uh, broad ideas. This really is a time just to, wait, to, say, to, say, to say thank you. And I'd, I'd like to strongly reiterate the thanks to, to Jane and to Derek, whose countless hours uh, devoted to this. Uh, well, I hope I'll, I'll make you proud. Um, my thanks to Marge. Um, we are going to work together cheek to jowl uh, to keep the momentum going. My thanks to Mary Ann, uh, who has been so wonderful through this process. Um, it, uh, it takes a lot of work to be the leader of a board, uh, and you don't get any money. Uh, you mostly get a lot of grief. And uh, she has done remarkably. It's also a moment, uh, you know, in my own mind, uh, to to be thankful for the the Miller Center, and my my colleagues there who've been been very supportive throughout the years and throughout this process. Uh, it's yesterday was actually a very hard day for me there. That that was the day that I got to to walk the halls at the Miller Center and realize that, that conversations I'd had a hundred times, uh, I was not going to have a hundred times more. In the weeks ahead, I'll be wrapping up seven years of work at the Miller Center, uh, an institution that I will, I will love dearly, like I love Longwood so dearly. And uh, after that, uh, there will be uh, a little bit of time to just tend to domestic things, maybe take a trip, enjoy ourselves, and then really hit the ground energized and running on June 1st. And I thought, <clears throat> as a closing act here, that we might uh, do a little bit of a group exercise, a quick group exercise, to unleash the animal spirits a little bit. <laughs> um, this is a, a Reevely tradition. It's called the responsive cheer. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to practice once, and then we'll do it for real. Uh, so the, the, the way the cheer goes is 1839. I, I'll call out 1839. Everybody will say 1839. Uh, I'll call out 1839, 1839. Then uh, Longwood U. So 1839, 1839, Longwood U. And we're going to divide ourselves, uh, <laughs> men and women. Um, men will say 18. Women will say 39. Do, do you think we've got this drill? <clears throat> and then, then we will all say Longwood U together. So a practice round first. Um, are we ready? Uh, so I'll say 1839, then women will say 18, men will say 39. Oh, did, did I just flip it around? <laughs> Men will say 18, women will say 39. Okay, everybody's got their part. So 1839. 1839. Excellent, excellent. Um, and let's try Longwood U all together. Longwood, Longwood U. All right.
Very good. Very good. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do it for real now. <laughs> be, be lusty. Um, 1839. 1839. 1839. 1839. Uh, start over. Start over. <clears throat> Are we ready? 1839. 1839. 1839. 1839. 1839. Long would you. All right. Thank you all so much. And I think there might be juice and cookies somewhere uh, that we, we can all retreat to and shake some hands. All right, thank you. Wow, he's tall. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of this thing. Um, Brian Rowland will yell at me if I don't thank you for coming and tell you to enjoy the reception in the foyer, and if there's press here, we will be immediately to my right. So have at it. Punching cookies. We'll be out there in a second. Thank you all very much. <laughs>